use AI tools for research until you've watched these videos. Look at this. All of these people have rules for using generative AI in their journals. This is Elsevier. Look at all this boring stuff. This is Wiley. Look at all of this stuff. This is another one. PLOS. PLOS One. Here's all the stuff they want you to know about using AI. This is all the stuff that Sage wants you to know. Nature group of people. That's actually not too long, that one. But science. Look, it's all there. This one is mega long. All this stuff. And you need to know how it relates to using AI in research. And in this video, we're going to go through all of the rules. And the first one is the most important. Do you remember a time when people were like, oh, you shouldn't use AI, it's cheating. Well, they realize now that they like using AI, so now they're like, it's okay, just here are the rules. So, the first thing you should know is that they want you to disclose whether or not you're using AI. So, the way you can do that is by putting it in acknowledgement section. You can put it in um, like a disclosure statement, but essentially each journal has their own way, and this is what people are saying about it. So, in Elsevier journals, it's says authors should disclose in their manuscript the use of AI and AI assisted technology um, and a statement will appear in the published work. Wiley Author Services says if an author has used Gen AI tool to develop any portion of the manuscript it must be described transparently and in detail. The detail is very important. It's the type of tool you're using, how you've used it, as well as the large language model that you've used. For example, GPT-4 or Claude, Anthropic, those sort of things are very important. And it says in the method section or in a disclosure within the acknowledgement section as applicable. So some places want you to put it into the method section of writing that paper if you've used it for any sort of like process to do with your research, but you can't use it for all of your research. The next one is just as important. One of the biggest rules is AI should not be used for original research. Now, what does that mean? They only want you to use AI tools for language stuff. Essentially, they don't want you to alter images, which we all know is not right, not ethical. You can't make up results and you shouldn't be using AI um, to kind of like change the words or the outcome of your conclusions because that is clearly not your own work. So here Elsevier also says, we do not permit the use of Gen AI or AI assisted tools to create or alter images in submitting manuscripts. We've all been there. We've got these little results and we're like, oh, if only that little smudge wasn't there or if only this was a little bit clearer. Don't use it for that. Only use it if you're submitting to a journal for language-based things. So we all know that you shouldn't fabricate results, so don't use AI to fabricate results. And it's one of the easiest ones <laughs> to comply with, I think. I often get like questions like, well, I use this, which probably is AI, like uh, Grammarly or some other language tool. But there are different rules for different journals. This is what Elsevier says. It says, um, these technologies should only be used to improve readability and the language of the work. Now that's really important because you can use it to make it more academic. You can use it to make sure that your conclusions are clear, that it's structured in the right way. But what you can't do is say, I've got this conclusion, is there anything else I can say about it? If you're adding to the knowledge, no, 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 naughty, naughty, spank, spank, spank. Ooh, ooh, naughty, ooh. naughty. But you can use it to change the language. It's a fine line sometimes, but those are the rules. And then it says down here, tools that are used to improve spelling, grammar, and general editing are not included in the scope of these guidelines. So if you're using a tool like spell checkers or Grammarly, you don't need to worry about putting it in there as an AI assisted tool. It's only if it really helps you sort of like formulate the language that you're going to use. Now listen up you, this is all about making sure you are responsible for the language and the text that you are presenting as your own work. So here, PLOS One says, all of the statements in the article reporting to all of those things represent the author's own ideas. And so the use of AI tools and technologies to fabricate or otherwise misrepresent primary research data is unacceptable. That is your warning. You need to be sure that you are comfortable and it truly represents your thoughts on the results or the conclusions you are presenting. Wiley goes a little bit further and says the author is fully responsible for the accuracy of any information provided by the tool and for correctly referencing any supporting work on 
which that information depends. So AI is this great like plausibility machine. Sometimes it gives you stuff that sounds so, so plausible, but in fact is made up. So you need to make sure that you're referencing any bits of information just like you would if you're using your meat brain and typing it out over caffeine fueled fury. I love it that all of the different journals have said this, that ChatGPT or any large language model does not constitute authorship. So in nature, they say large language models such as ChatGPT do not currently satisfy our authorship criteria. And that's because they need to be able to be sort of like questioned and made accountable for the stuff they're putting in to the research paper. So you should be able to um, go to an author and say, why? did you do this? Justify to me why this is a thing. And ChatGPT can't do that because it doesn't have the intimate knowledge of your results, of the background that you're trained in. All of those things mean that it doesn't sort of like qualify as authorship, merely a tool. And Elsevier says authors should not list AI and AI assisted technologies as an author or co-author, co nor cite AI as an author. So there we are. Just don't put it as the top. Like you can't have Stapleton et al. You can't have chat GPT at Al. No, no, no. Well, we, I think we all know that, right? Don't we? Yeah. Good. <laughs> And the last thing I think we need to know about using AI in research is the most important one in making sure that research stays credible. Now, AI tools should not be used to evaluate someone else's ideas in peer review. First of all, uploading their information into ChatGPT or a large language model could break confidentiality and that is a big no-no. We want to make sure that the peer review process is as robust as possible. If AI starts to get involved, it means that people and experts aren't using their expertise to evaluate a peer-reviewed paper because the peer part is very important in peer review. The peer part is what makes it and if you're outsourcing that it's no longer peer review, it's AI review which probably isn't too far away but it's not there yet so don't use it to peer review papers. This is what science has to say about it. Reviewers may not use AI technology in generating or writing their reviews because this could breach the confidentiality of the manuscript and Wiley down here says Gen AI tools should only be used on a limited basis in connection with peer review. So much stricter guidelines. It can only be used by an editor or peer reviewer to improve the quality of the written feedback and this must be done transparently declared upon submission of the peer review report to the manuscripts handling editor. So you can only use it to make sure that your ideas are communicated clearly in writing form. You can't get your ideas from AI. I think that makes sense. All right. Now, the last thing is, look at this. This is a PowerPoint presentation, so I always put a little clap slide at the end. Well done, Andy. You did so great. I hope you're clapping at home. Clap, 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 clap. Makes me feel good. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about using chat GPT to make research simple. Now, you can also take the prompts and use these across other large language models, but I think this one is a good place to start. Go check it out.